Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dungeon Discourse. Hey, hello. We're here. The show Hi. about the show, where we talk Hi. about the show and discuss things about the show. And have I said the word show enough? Show. For show. Um, show hey us what you've been up to. Welcome on, welcome on in. Hope y'all are having a great Thursday. It's a home stretch, guys. The weekend is around the corner. Woo. Let's fucking go. I'm going to be drinking all weekend because I deserve it. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. D&D um, &D on Sunday. It's, it's a 30-something to hit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, um, last episode was good. This week, uh, we didn't have uh, Divinity because Duke is on the fucking hustle for his job this week. He's been grinding his little little, little pecker off. But um, I like how Dungeon Discourse marks like the halfway point of Dungeon Select. Like, it's now equally as long ago as it will be towards the next session, you know what I mean? Like, it's been, you know, it's kind of like middle points. Like, oh, halfway there, boys. Almost <laughs> D&D almost &D time again. Honestly, that makes me feel worse. I was like, oh, it's nearly Sunday. And now I'm like, oh, <laughs> God. Yeah, but then again, keep in mind that the, the weekend tends to fly by faster than the first, Not like, half of the week, right? Like, yeah, okay, well, fair enough. My for work schedule is fucky. Yeah, For me normal too. people. Okay, well, for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, so we're here to discuss the last episode of uh, Dungeon Select, uh, named The Three Dragons. We're here to uh, do some D&D &D trivia, because Ethan hasn't had his go yet. Uh, and so far, I'll, I'll quickly rattle off the leaderboard. We have a shared first place with Bell and Soko, each having four points. A shared second place of Duke and Koiba with three points. Then we have Laura with two points and Vincent with one point. Vincent? <laughs> I got one point, dude. I'm happy. Because I'm your good. score last time was so dog shit. <laughs> you know, you're back on the show. Ethan still has to do trivia. So I'm giving you one chance to redeem yourself to at least see yeah, if you can get okay. more than one point on the board. You All get right? two points. You're not even last anymore. <clears throat> I shared last, I guess, technically. But, you know. <laughs> it's not I'll, give you, I'll was... give you this chance. You know, the second chance. Because you're the you're the you're the fan favorite, you know. Isn't that a thing? Elimination brackets, you know. You're you're the loser, so you get a chance. The underdog. We've got extra. Vote. What is this? Strictly come trivia. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck that is. Oh I'll my god! <laughs> I'm gonna send you. It's a British TV show uh, where celebrities dance, and the shit ones always make it into the final because people ring up and vote to watch them make a fool of themselves. Right, right. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, with that said, uh, first of all, obviously, we start off with. Uh, um, a recap. Sorry, my brain just went there. Uh, a recap of last session, which was um, an eventful one. You entered the lair of the um, cult of which you don't really even know if they have a name yet. So I'm just going to call it the cult of, of, of Fear Krag for now. Uh, they have a name. You just haven't you just haven't found out what they call themselves yet. So smile. Um... You entered the, the lair, explored the first part of the tomb, discovered um, depictions of several evil draconic deities, um, three of them, hence the three dragons. One being Tiamat, the most famous and most evil of them all, pretty much. Uh, but also the god of the draconic god of death and undeath, named Null, and the god the Draconic God of Fire and Destruction. Um, whose fucking name I'm blanking on? Smile? <laughs> Garrix. Um, you did some exploring, found found yourselves into a, a few fights. A um, couple of you went down. It was a uh, it's been it's been rough so far. You also found some dead followers of Aros, um, which is a little interesting because. Not only, you know, are they clerics to to a god um, found dead in this lair of a bunch of evil dragon worshippers. Also, you're in a town that doesn't even have a temple district. So, you know, riddle me this. How did they get here? Um, you've also found a room that was scorching hot, fought some cultists that were tasked to protect a handful of dragon eggs. Uh, you destroyed all of them, but Jax managed to claim one for himself and shove it in his bag of holding real quick. Um, which, there was a lot of... I'm gonna address that. Um, 
there was a lot of like discussion about that in the discord which i'm all for discussion but i am going to clarify some things of why i think that that was a completely in character decision and uh, why it makes sense from a jack's point of view which i definitely want to address so we'll get to that um you also you know davian striking conversation with the rats getting some intel on some of the you know the layouts of of, of the um of the of the lair you're in and we ended the session in a room with a talking chest so first things first i'm the realist second thing second i'm gonna address that whole dragon egg thing first just to have that ticked off the list right the reason why um it makes sense for Jax to want it's not because you know we want to raise a dragon we're cool no it is because we me and Soko did some talking about you know him being an artificer and making stuff and ma making magic items perhaps and and yada 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 and I'm quickly whip up the page real quick with um we were using the standard 5e crafting magic items rules which was all about just like oh have a bunch of money that's it that's all you need but we recently swapped to the xanathar's guide for everything rules of crafting magic items which is um not without having it cuts the price like the gold price down a bunch and the time it, it takes to craft it but in exchange for that you need to find find materials and those materials need to come off creatures with a certain cr the higher the cr the more the more rare the magic item you can make so with that said dragons you know or or you know at their earliest stage i guess wormlings or just the eggs in general are creatures that have you know various crs but because this is the new system we're using for crafting magic items it fully and totally completely makes sense for Dax to say, hey, yo, I'm going to take one. Because he can, at a later point, do whatever the fuck he wants with it and use the, 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 the materials he, he gains from this dragon egg uh, to craft magic items later on down the line. Which is, this is why I completely stand by Jax being adamant he wanted at least one. Uh, sure, it's a bit of a meme because we ran a one shot where Soko found a dragon egg and was like, "Oh my god, it's gonna be my pet, see a pog," um, right? But um, uh, yes, Soko didn't really or Jax didn't like say that. But then again, last session was very hectic and there was a lot of fucking screaming at each other. So I don't fully blame Soko for being like, "I just want one." Fuck you, Absolutely because there was a lot of fucking yelling at each other and a lot of people talking over each other. So yeah, but there, there's that. Yes, That's, yes. Keep that in mind. Um, I like I said, I love having discussions in our Discord. That's why. That's where. That's why the discussion channel is there. But um, that's just from a DM standpoint. Why I completely understand and stand by uh, Jax. You know, copping one of the eggs. I don't know if Jax is necessarily the sort of person to want to explain that either. Like yeah. he'll just be like, I want to research it, and Brooks is like. I don't fucking like these eggs. But if Jack says he's not going to let it hatch, that's I trust him. Yeah. You know. It could be really fucking cool. It could be fucking hilarious when everything goes wrong and we have to put this poor like <laughs> dragon monster out of his misery. <laughs> Which will definitely happen. And then eat it. We're making a, a big dragon boy. omelets. Um, yeah. Absolutely, mm. mm. both dragon. Yeah. Mate. Um, just to give you, you know, my side of things because I didn't really respond to that thread because I kind of was like, uh, you know, let them fucking discuss and whatever. You know, I was like, I'll just don't discourse because that's what this fucking show is for, right? Like, that's that's why we do the show is to talk about decisions made and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, that's basically you know my my take on on that whole um discussion, I suppose. Um. But anyway, uh, unless y'all have anything to say on that matter, uh, we can we can start talking about some other stuff. Um, do you guys have any questions, comments about last session? Any like, oh, what was this? Oh, oh, what if that? Or you know that sort of thing. I just really wish I had an immovable rod. 
Why? With the door closing. Oh, right. <laughs> Unfortunate, bro. Yeah. I mean, you could have had one. I know. That's what I mean. Yeah. You, I told you, you, you started with one magic item. Were you tempted to not have the door closed because the others were out there? Absolutely not. Ooh. Door closes. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's what happens, dude. Yeah. I'm I, it was one of those things where, like, if Lazarin's going to stay on his own, Brooks isn't going to leave him on his own out there because he thinks he's valuable. So I would have also gone out, but then someone else volunteered, and Brooks was like, cool, I want to go see what this is about. Mm-hmm. And everyone had this, like, uh, there was a very. To, there was a divide within the group as to whether to do it or not, mm-hmm. and I've always thought of Brooks specifically to be a character that, like, he doesn't mind what the decision is, he just hates that process. Yeah. He hates that, like, logically going through, do we do this, do we not do this? He's like, look, it's quicker to just do the thing and see what happens than to sit and argue about it, so let's just fucking either go or not go, I don't care. Yeah, I mean... I was definitely curious of what that this talking chest was, but was definitely not going to leave whoever decided to stay out alone. Because that just leads to bad shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Like getting stabbed. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the last time the person was, someone was alone with Sai, they got stabbed, so this hopefully will go better. Oh, uh, I really want to get the TPK. If someone just keep every time size alone of someone, they just end up dead. And the, the party's gonna be like, hmm. <laughs> well, I've watched Sai be absolutely above board. But quick, uh, quick question. Everyone else. Your mic, uh, you're not loud, but you are peeking a little bit. Could you maybe. Okay. Because I know you said you, you fiddled with your mic a little bit. So, like, it was, you know, you were, you, you piped up a little bit, and it, I heard, like, you know, distortion a little bit. Why am I peeking? No, I don't know if peaking is the right word, but basically, uh, as, when that happens to my mic, it's typically because the in the in just the in windows gain is too high, and it just like. I mean, in windows gain is fucky anyway, but. Yeah. That should <laughs> you... be better? Question mark. Like, pipe up a little bit. Just like. Hello. A little more energy. Loud. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. Okay. I'm well, sorry. Shit. Yeah. Like, watch Sai be like all above board, but every time he's alone with someone, they get stabbed. <laughs> and everyone's, everyone in the group's like, maybe this guy's just a murderer. <laughs> I have my own stash of uh, purple worm <clears throat> venom, or whatever it's called. Mm. <sighs> Richer than we think if you've got purple worm poison. Yeah, that shit's expensive as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, it is. It's very expensive. But hey, it's very effective, as we've seen. <laughs> I mean... There's a little bit of pride to Brooks with the knowledge that, like, like, because obviously he knows enough to, like, he know that that's a valuable poison. Mm, sure. So there's a little bit of an ego to it of, like, I got stabbed with this really expensive shit and I lived. Get fucked. What a waste of money. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess, I mean, then again, fucking Brooks doesn't need much to fucking get an ego boost, to be fair. That's kind I of mean... his, his personality. <clears throat> He's... Def- there is definitely an ego there. Mm. You, th- you don't say. <laughs> but he does. Pl- he does play into it. I think that uh-huh. we as a group have not yet got close enough to, for me or Brooks to reveal all the secrets. Mm-hmm. But he's definitely more than happy for everyone else to just. Think yeah, I feel like Brooks is like-, like the only character whose backstory really hasn't really come up yet no. at all. It's right? come up in the the fact that Kess read the letters. Yeah. So that's all, and that's purposely vague. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's more than happy for everyone to think that he's just an egotistical alcoholic who thinks he's the greatest. You know, if they want to make that assumption, he's happy to let that carry on as long as it's beneficial. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, Vincent, I had a question for you, right? Hit me. Uh, from a, from Sai's point of view, right? Knowing that, um, after all these years, he might finally track down his nemesis, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. How does, what does that to, to do? Oh, how does that make him feel? He's <laughs> fucked. He doesn't know how to feel about this. 
He, I think it's more, he's more in like a state of disbelief that he's just, he's, he's just like, it can't, there's no way that this is it. He's like just convincing himself that there's no way it's it so that he doesn't get disappointed when it, it in his mind, it inevitably like is not the thing he's looking for. Right. right but right, this right. is the straight up the closest he's ever been to, like this is the closest thing that sounds like exactly what he's looking for. And he doesn't know, maybe there are more than one Shadow Demon, I don't know. Who knows if it's the one he's searching for. So nice. yeah, he's in nice. disbelief, but yeah, he's like his name also... hasn't been dropped yet in any documentation you found, so there's still exactly. You know, it's exactly. So he he's uh, he's excited at the same time, worried, and just doesn't really know what to think of it. So he's just gonna follow it and see where it leads. What was the shadow demon's name? Shakira. Yes. That is definitely the Just show. get yeah. into the fight as he downs someone. Ooh, baby, when you talk like that! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Pat Demon it. Pat Bard. <laughs> that would be an interesting interesting multi-creature multi type class. Um. Alright, yeah, I mean, shit. It's gonna be, dude, these next couple of sessions is, uh... There's gonna be a lot of like reveals and, and plot twists. It's just and... so it's just so like this the feeling like the excitement and shit. Just not with Sai, just me and like ah oh, yes, I just want to know what's gonna happen so bad every nice. time. I mean it's good. I'm glad you're uh, you know you're into it. It's good. Yeah, it's great. Hell yeah. <clears throat> okay. 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 Do you have any questions about you know I don't know the, the parts of the dungeon you've seen so far or things that? You... Um. I mean, not really at the moment. I don't want to. I obviously want to know about that room we didn't go to, but we I don't know if we'll, we might even yeah. go back to it at some point. So, but other than that, uh, not really. <laughs> I'm scared. Don't kill us, please. I'm gonna try not to, but you know, it's not it's <laughs> yeah. not up to me. Uh, really the fights are definitely all like balanced. The only reason, like I I know Laura went down because of sheer just insane. Fucking natural I, Laura attempted I, ro I rolled a nat 20, rolled max on the weapon damage, and like three under max on the poison damage. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know? Laura attempted fate because we went in. She's like, don't use all your shit. It's the first fight. And then next turn was on the floor and conscious. Yeah, like it's, I mean, it's <laughs> not even Laura attempting fate. It's just, yeah, it's like two excess and chance. Baddies have been rolling well and you guys didn't. You know, it's just sometimes. Oh, great on initiative. Yeah, but your damage rolls for like how many fucking like people have I heard? I rolled. Oh, I no, only, my damage die. Like for people. I only like, rolled a lot last session for damage last session. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully uh, you know, we'll balance that out next uh, next next session. <laughs> we'll see. Fours, baby. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, I mean shit. If we don't have any any questions, really, I'll we'll, Ooh, we'll go I to. I have one. Oh, it's very weird and niche. The coffins. Mm -hmm. That are in this underground sort of coty thing. Yes. Uh, were the coffins? Uh, are the coffins something they've added? Uh, was it part of the original building? Um, Have they been there like longer? Okay. What I can say is that um, although this town does not have a temple or a cathedral or a church, it does need a place to you know, put it's dead. And that's what this, you're just in this underground crypt that has just been taken over by the cult. It, it's it's really weird because like, some parts of it really give off that vibe of like, they're squatting here. But then there's also like, clear places where they've made adjustments, like the doors and... Yeah, I mean, they're squatting there, but they've just completely like... It's a fixer-upper. Yeah, exactly. They've definitely made some made some alterations and, uh, you know, tried to do some things to certain rooms and it didn't really pay out because that's why some of the rooms have partially been collapsed and shit like that because, oh, fuck, you're, you're underground, one, you know, support beam cracks, oopsie-daisy, there goes, there goes the ceiling. But, um, no, nah, they're definitely squatting. Like, they're, this is not, you know, those coffins and, and the, the, the bodies in, or the bodies in the coffins has nothing to do with them. It's just, you know, it's just been a They've been buried there long ago, and these boys just kind of moved in, pretty much. Yeah, Brooks is convinced that the rest of the group are cursed as shit for opening those coffins. <clears throat> Bad vibes. 
Got some rubies out of it, though. Worth. You know, two fucking rubies just in, in, in one of these eye sockets. Just He won't move. touch the rubies. He might touch the money that comes from them, but... No, no fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, we have uh, quite a handful of questions submitted, actually. Um, so Sassy popular. alone submitting like four. So uh, we're going to go through those. Four tape. Sassy is literally the only person in the world that calls you that. <laughs> um, how are you, both IC and OOC, feeling about the whole situation with Kess in the Journal? Oh, okay. Obviously out of character, I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, like... <clears throat> Belle's a great person to play D&D with because she herself is naturally chaotic. Absolutely. <laughs> and seeing her... It's not just the fact that Kess is chaotic, it's the fact that Kess lacks... Like, she lacks this world knowledge of, like, you know, this whole spiel of, I've never really had friends before, so I didn't realize I was crossing a boundary there. You know, which, like... It leads to shit like this that happens all the time, where, like, Kess just does dumb shit without realizing it's dumb. And it's always, always fun to play out. So, mm -hmm. Kess taking the journal for me not only created, like, a great dynamic between the two of them, where suddenly they've gone from these two people that have, like, hung out once or twice to, like, having a proper argument and then, like, actually making up over it and realizing that they sort of enjoy each other's company. Um, but also, like, it's the first proper hint of Brooks's backstory that's come out. And that only came out because, because Kess stole those journals. Because, you know, that, those letters could have sat in that bag for half a campaign before coming out. Yeah. True, true, true. Uh, in character, Brooks is really not sure on Kess. Sometimes he thinks she's an absolute asshole, and then sometimes, like, the fact that she was visibly upset that he'd been stabbed, like, threw him for a loop. And he finds a... He finds her really interesting, but he's also, at the moment, trying to keep his distance from everyone. He still has a little bit of, like, you know, we've only been going around, like, three weeks. Mm hmm Okay, okay, okay. Um, Vincent. Yes? Is this how you expected your time with Dungeon Select to go? Um, does your character behave differently than you expected he would? And what has been your most fun moment? Oh, God. Um... Questions. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's like questions within a question, but... You know. <laughs> I did not know what to expect for Dungeon Select, like for me joining. Like I knew it was you guys do like, just have fun playing D and D, and it's great. It looks great to watch and stuff. I had no idea how it would work out with me, but so far, like I said before, it's been great. So no regrets. Um, what else? What was the other the rest of the question? Sorry, because it was like um, three in one. <laughs> does your character behave differently than you thought he would? Um. Yeah, I think uh, I was initially going to make him a lot more... Uh, he's a lot calmer than I anticipated. I was more going to make him be more like active, more maybe more intense. But with the whole... I had no idea what voice I was going to do or anything. So when the voice came out, I was like, okay. So it's more of a like raspy, low uh, voice. And I don't know, I just thought him being more calm and collected would be a better fit... For the whole idea of how I was playing him, and with the whole move, his movement, his his uh, the spell he uses to like kind of whisper around the the battlefield, mm -hmm. all that kind of just fits in really well with the whole just kind of super like serene, calm kind of character type. So cool. no, initially I uh, no I didn't really know how I was gonna play him. Kind of just saw how that felt natural and at the time and it turned out that way so oh yeah and uh, what's been your most fun moments so far oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i mean hmm <clears throat> what was the most fun moment or fun just like your favorite moment so far i did i didn't <laughs> brooks getting stabbed <laughs> <laughs> i enjoy <laughs> Brooks getting stabbed. Let me elaborate. Let me elaborate. 
<laughs> just the whole, like, just the amount of the intensity of it. <laughs> like... <laughs> Go on. Um, Did you just have a deeper hole? Go yeah, on. exactly, exactly. Like, <laughs> like at the end of that session when he got stabbed, I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like this is actually like a risk, and there's, you know, because like sometimes when you play D and D, it's you can kind of feel that there's not that much at stake. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, I'm a guest. Someone gets stabbed, and like it's very real possibility of death. And uh, yeah, so that that was super intense. I loved the, I, I mean, I hated and loved the feeling at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then when coming back, just just hoping to God the dice would be in my favor, and they were, luckily. And then just being able to levitate him to to safety was very entertaining for me. Okay, good. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to like chime into is like your time on DS. Like previously on campaign one, when we had guests, it was typically like a <clears throat> episode or two. You know, that's it. Yeah. Um, but with this, and you gave me a character with, like, a pretty, like, you know, a backstory that I could really work with. I was like, you know how in TV shows, there's just, like, one season, there's just this extra main cast character, and then the next season he fucks off? That's kind of how I look at this now. Like, this story <laughs> arc will just, you'll be there from beginning to end, and then, you know, Sai will just go off on his merry way, do whatever. With Obviously, with the potential to come back later on down the line. Or be but, dead. Uh, or be dead. Um, Who knows? But yeah, like I normally, I it's very much like a you know one two sessions, a little more sometimes depending on how how long things take. Um, <clears throat> but this is all fully just like a I mean fuck it, I guess he's just here for the entire story arc. And dude, <laughs> it's been really good having you. It's been fun as fuck. I'm gonna be very sad to see you go. I'll be honest. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you can you can take that compliment and I'll take it. Put it in the back pocket. <laughs> for save it for later. Uh, another question for you, Vincent. Okay. Um, which NPC do you like the most? So, like, mm. who, the NPCs is, that your character has dealt with, I guess. Uh, which NPC? I really like the the owner of that of the shop. Of the, 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 yeah, I really like Vendetta. Really liked her. There's just how much I hated her already by just <laughs> not not even meeting her, just ha seeing I mean, the interactions. She's a with, cocky bitch, dude. Let me tell yeah, you. <laughs> a greedy, a greedy cocky bitch. <laughs> Like that, I, I really liked how you uh, portrayed her, though it was really cool. So yeah, I think I'd say I'd say her. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've not met that many. No, I've, I've kind of gone through my mind. I was like, yeah, who has Sai really like interacted with? The uh, not much. Like a lot of the, not much at all. <laughs> no, exactly. Like a lot of the the interaction Sai's had has been with the party and getting to know yeah. them, and you know, or with the bad guys right before slicing them. You know what I mean? It's like mm. yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder if Sassy meant which PC does. Oh, PC? Oh, did she? I wonder. No, I wonder if that's what she I meant. mean, she typed NPC, so I, that's just the question I'm going to answer, I guess. I mean, I get, fuck it. Which player I'm character? Gonna, I'm going to ask. Fuck I'm it. Gonna which player character does I enjoy, enjoy the most? Oh, well, God. <laughs> oh, God. Pick your favorite I... now before we're all offended. Pick your favorite child. <laughs> the rest are getting put up for adoption. I think Sai's favorite character at the moment is Davian, mainly because he can relate most to kind of the stuff he does, the tracking, the... since they're both rangers as well. Just the fact that he likes to track things and mm -hmm. Sai can really relate to being able to track a specific thing well, mainly with Davian and his hunter's mark. Mm -hmm. And Sai with his chase of this creature for the... with his, uh, what's it called? Favorite enemy. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I think I'd say Davian and I mean, I, I personally love all the characters. Sai is like, there's so much dysfunctional stuff happening in this group. Sai is kind of like, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we'll get there because a few months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, definitely he feels like the, feels like Davian is someone he can relate to most. Okay. Yeah, plus like Duke said, you know, you had that little... That little jolly cooperation where you two were like scouting the fucking shop out, tra tracking those fucking exactly. like invisible exactly. boys. Yeah. Um, for both characters, this is from Kitty Cat Katie. Um, what do you think about the different uh, inter uh, inter -party, like inner party relationships? So, like for instance, Kess and, and Daigon or Lazar and Davian. Uh, you want to go first? I mean, I just, you go, I've been talking for a while now. <laughs> okay. 
I feel like this is a really, really broad question because there's so many. So I'm not going to focus on every single character's interactions with every single character. Um, from an outside perspective, I really enjoy the sort of tension between Dagon and Kess and Jax right now. Um, yeah. Because from the start, Dagon's always been very sort of invested into Kess and Kess has always been a bit distant. And now, there's always been, like, to a certain extent, that because Daigon has always followed along with Kess, Daigon has never interacted with the party much on their own. And now that that's begun to, like, diverge just a little bit, it's suddenly, like, a really good chance for the other members of the group to get to know Daigon a little better. Mm -hmm. And to the same extent, Kess, but I think it's much more prevalent with Daigon that that's the uh, she's the the individual that was much more tied into Kess. yeah um jack's interactions with everyone are funny it's just a he he angry old man and honestly it works, like man it fucking it, works it just know? fits it's like seeing him and a lazarin argue over literally anything <laughs> it's just the most fun shit to it's sit like, back and you watch know, it's the fucking holidays and you know He's Grand like the grandpa one. comes over and keeps complaining about back in my day or oh, you children with your iPhones. Like, You're it's just waiting for him to say something. Like, Jax isn't a bad person, but I feel like we're waiting for him to say something that's like considered like taboo in like the D&D realms. Oh, like, I'm waiting for him like to throw Like that racist up. fucking grandpa that comes over I'm, once every yeah, year and starts talking about the good old days. I'm waiting for him to throw and be like, yeah. you know, like, when did they start giving half orcs like clothes again or something like really heavily. <clears throat> Ooh. But, <laughs> like, watching them argue is just so funny. Especially because they both come at it from di very different points of view. For Doc, I'm um, meant to breed with you prime material plane goers. Like, something like that. You know? Yeah, like, <laughs> some really, yeah. like, accidentally like, yeah, offensive yeah, yeah. shit. Um, <clears throat> I really feel like... A Lazarin's little cornering of Brooks and being like, So, you are not... Are, are you undead, or are you from the hells like <laughs> like it was so awkward because he did it in such a way that brooks was like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> but like i really like i think elastrin's just one of those characters where like <clears throat> nobody in the party hates him <clears throat> even if like <clears throat> jacks and him argue all the fucking time like i think there'll be a point where jacks realizes that he respects elastrin yeah um and then i think in terms of like Brooks and Kess, Kess brings out the fucking chaotic side of Brooks and vice versa. And I know that like anytime those two are doing anything together, it's going to be like just dumb, chaotic shit, which is always fucking fun. Like it's always <laughs> stupidly like just, I mean, that's what it is. Like we've got a very chaotic party you do. this time around and as much as I can, like, to a certain extent, that makes, like, linear storytelling a bit difficult. I feel like it pulls in all those stupid ideas that, like... Yeah, but that's the thing, though. Snowball. Because um, last campaign was very linear. Uh, there was a, definitely, like, a defined beginning and end. Because uh, you pursued this, like, same storyline for, for for years. Yeah. Pretty much. Um and this time, I I wanted to kind of step away from it being linear and feeling much more like you have choices, which is why everyone has kind of some plot hooks that they can just throw in whenever they want, which is why um, I exposed you to a lot of different, you know, potential quests and stuff uh, already. And even when you were on that initial story arc of, like, the whole you want tea thing, I threw some quests in there as well for you guys to just do on the side. You know, that whole thing with, um, uh, what's her name? The Tiefling Barkeep. Uh, 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 you know, Joey. oh, go find this fucking item for me. You know, just because I wanted, I want, I wanted this. Um, you know, and you know, you play video games. You know, you you have certain RPGs that are very linear. Like it gives you the idea that there's an open world, but it's very much like, oh, look at all these cool backdrops that I'll never go to because it's just there to look pretty and not there to be actually interacted with. Whereas this time, I wanted to feel like literally you can go wherever the fuck you want. Literally, 
You want to go east? You go east. You want to go west? You go west. You want to go to that city? You go to that city. You want to go to the jungle? You go to the jungle. Uh, uh, and, you know, I'll throw some plot hooks in there to give you, you know... Even if you're like, you know what, dude, fuck it. Let's just fucking go somewhere. We have nothing to do. Let's just fucking go. I'll throw a plot hook your way on your trip there that you know oh you're already on the way there might as well go do this you know what i mean i want it to feel a lot more open to your uh your wishes i guess or you're like oh i have I, never been to the beach before let's go to the fucking beach and i'll, I'll throw a towel out of my ass that's at the beach that has some shit going on fuck it you know what i mean I, to be honest i'd be really excited to see what happens with the group like when there is like no plot hook for like a session Mm -hmm. like we get somewhere and there's nothing shady going on it's like okay are we gonna all go look for some form of work like are we all gonna cause trouble <laughs> are we gonna chill out like that sort of like moment of not having any pressing matters i feel like with the other campaign because because it was such a big threat and don't get me wrong like epic fantasy storytelling is the niche it's you know yeah absolutely and we were it's, right there. it's it's the difference between we're not the heroes we're just like in that one it's like you're a band of heroes in this one i feel like it's much more close to like we're a group of mercenaries it group doesn't what? a group mercenaries. of mercenaries yeah yeah it, it doesn't have that feeling it doesn't feel like these are the characters that are going to be like yeah fuck yeah let's go around saving the world it feels like these are the characters that are going to be like right so what's next where do we go? What do we do? And I feel like that's really interesting and fun. Okay. Uh, Vincent. Um, Same question. Do you want me to repeat the question? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, Please. Uh, what do what you... What what do you think about the the different like inner party relationships that uh that have that you know that appear uh that i guess uh, sai is also uh exp expo has been exposed to a little bit you definitely yeah. you can definitely tell that some people within the group are tighter with each other than others yeah i mean sai sai like obviously oh see i know that um the whole situation with kes and daigon mm -hmm. is like there's like a whole like story behind that sai has no idea but he does notice that she usually <laughs> signs to Kess and they sign between each other a lot. So he know he he noticed that there's something there. And that's just cool. There's just like not knowing the full, just having kind of like clues or little things between people is kind of cool. I feel like finding that out in character and discovering this is, is kind of cool. I really like that. So I like the, the Kess uh, Sila is interested by the Kess and Daigon, whatever is going on there. Uh, also is... Uh, how do I say this? <laughs> Impressed that... I don't know, that Kess can some pe be sometimes really mature with some people and very <laughs> immature in regards to others. So there's a huge mm -hmm. like difference in just depending... <laughs> Not even depending on who it is, just depending on, I guess, how Kess feels. <laughs> uh, day, you know, the Bell yeah, Cup chaotic yeah. today or not. And, um... <clears throat> he's inch. What else is he? I'm trying to think. They're really, oh, obviously, Elazar and Jack's arguing about everything. Even though they argued a bit with... it. What, I don't know, because it hasn't been uh, too bad, I don't think, since Sai is here. There's been a few arguments, but nothing yeah. too, too, too ridiculous. I think they got into a spat about religion once with when yeah. I was yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'd say I think there's like all all the the interactions are great, honestly, between the characters, and there's it's so unique between it can go from something like uh, really nice to something extreme, like in within a second, like the whole stealing the 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 journal from. From Brooks and everything like that, Sai is like, "Welp, these guys have some some issues to deal with." <laughs> and uh, yeah, the I don't know. It's I think most of them are pretty. good. Also, the relationship between Onu and Davian is also <laughs> an interesting one. Oh, that's that's some sketchy shit. 
Yeah. And he he's so defensive. He's like, I'm not that mean to own it. And we're like, oh my guy, that <laughs> poor bird. <laughs> yeah, because I, 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 I was just a really, fucking lad. Yeah. Owen was one of the boys. But yeah. Owen uh, deserves better. <laughs> Owen lives matter. Yeah, I'm mainly just excited. Seeing all that just excites me to see what, what's going to come of it, like in this dungeon and in afterwards and all that. Like, it's just the unknown is very spooky. If we live. Sorry, there's some fucking like background noise going on around me and I'm trying to like, whenever it gets loud, I'm trying to like filter it out by muting the microphone and shit. Um, okay. Now we have some questions from uh, our resident Sir Duke, the one and only. Um, Ethan, how important is a party pecking order to Brooks, and does he see himself as a leader of sorts? I wouldn't say that Brooks sees himself as a leader, mainly because he doesn't want to be the one burdened with making decisions. Mm -hmm. I think he definitely sees himself as one of the more... <laughs> he thinks that he's one of the more charismatic members of the group. He thinks that he's the better one in terms of, like, talking to people when he wants to be. Mm -hmm. Um, In terms of pecking order, his e he has an ego about a lot of things. He does. But I don't think he really cares in terms of pecking order. I think he is more than happy to sit back and let everyone else think that he's... You know, he's just a guy who hits things. He's not in any way important. He's happy to have that assumption made about him. So he's not going to push to be, you know, like the, the big hero, the face of the group. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, next up we have... Vincent. Yes. This, uh, you've you already kind of brushed over it a little bit, but, um... The party has been a chaotic mess plenty of times since Sai started tanking along. How is he feeling about it, and does he still have confidence in his companions? I mean... He... Combat-wise, he definitely, definitely has confidence. Because he saw how they, how... They all dealt with the, the, the Gorgons. Uh, he, like, they, he know, he clearly knows that they can deal with things that, like, are thrown at them combat-wise. It's more... <laughs> he has no idea how long these inter-party, like, breaches of trust and stuff will... How, how that will, you know, work in the long run. But at the moment, he's focused on what he has to do. He thinks that these people are perfectly capable of... Uh, succeeding at the task at hand so he's not worried at all about that and okay. he's kind of curious to see to just find out more about these people oh yeah and what better place to do that than in a dark no, underground super bad spooky guy dungeon alright <clears throat> and for me I got a question yay um, was the rat just flavor or did you have some intel prepared for the rat in case people animals came out that was put there fully knowing that there's people in the party that have access to speak with animals that's I, some very divinity two shit having I animals wrote some list there. like just a list of topics they're like oh this rat will give information if he gets given food that was like the, the catalyst and so he asked for food and Davian was like yeah sure fuck it yeah some fucking food or I, I don't remember I think it was Davian asked me that it, it was it was Davian yeah because he was the one talking to him um uh, and that was like the one thing like okay if they if he tells the rat to go fuck himself he'll fuck off and there's yeah, there's no intel um if given food uh, i had just a list of things that he would be able to tell the party you know he told the party about you know the laughing chest he told the party about some stuff uh further down uh down in the dungeon uh, that was just all that was all prepared that was just uh an optional thing for you there to find out a little bit of information uh if you know if, you, if, if that was something that came up in your minds at the time, and it did, so. Yeah, that was put there, uh, that was put there preemptively. Um, okay. I think. It's trivia time. 
Oh, <laughs> Can I double my score? Find Let's out. Let's find out. So, as always, uh, the rules. There's ten questions. Five are just overall D&D rules. Some a little niche, some less niche. And then normally we would have five questions that is in a topic called the, you know, the race quickfire round, where I give you a description of the race. Uh, and you have to tell me what race I'm talking about. But, quite frankly, after, you know, doing this for three episodes, I just kind of ran out of races that weren't blatantly obvious. So I decided to replace that category with a monster creature type quickfire round. Oh, fuck. Where I give Ooh. you the name of relatively popular and well-known monsters in D&D lore, and you have to give me what creature type they are. Oh, that's, oh, gonna, be, that's gonna be shitty. So I'm rules. gonna suck it. Um, if you know the answer to a question and I haven't finished talking yet, feel free to interrupt me. But I stop I stop asking the question completely and that, that's that. Um, if you have an answer, don't yell. No, you first buzz, just buzzer. Just just yell Bing. buzz or whatever the fuck and then give me your answer so I can so I can give the question to you. If you get the question wrong, your opponent has a chance to um to to answer as well. Um that's it, pretty much. Any questions? I don't think so. It's pretty fucking simple, right? So yeah, with that yeah. said, the first question. What spell can cause the spell magic missile to miss? Bing. Shield. Ethan? Correct. Shield. Damn so that's it. one point for Ethan. Second question. What is the sole container of a lich called? Bing. Oh. Phylacteric. Also correct. Two points for Ethan. Yeah. Strong start. Fuck did you, you. Did you. Did you know it? Uh, yes. Oh, I, probably so would have, I probably would have said it wrong. <clears throat> pronounced it wrong, but. That's fine. Third question. All devils are immune to which types of damage? Ooh. Bing. Okay. Fire and necrotic. Wrong. Oh, fuck. No, I know it. Mm. Vincent? I know it. I now. mean. Uh, I'd say fire and I don't know psychic. Also wrong. Can I can I reclaim my dignity even though it's not worth a point? Sure. Bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non magic uh, weapons. That doesn't no that doesn't count. Um, no. Ooh, it's fire it? and poison. Fuck. Oh, damn. It's fire and poison. Like at the, um that whole like it, it, I don't even think they're immune to that. That is his resistance. Is they're it still? I think so. But regardless, like I, fire I, and poison. I keep forgetting that poison is a damage type. But like because... all devils, no matter what devil you look at, they're all immune to fire and poison. Fire was a given, I feel. But the other I one. Feel like, I feel like I feel like poison and acid being separate is weird. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Still two nil for uh, for Ethan. <laughs> Which school of magic is known as a school that gives the caster the ability to change matter? Bing. I have no idea about transmutation. That. Correct. Vincent, no, it's not looking too good, dude. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! What, what, do we, what do we need to be top? Uh, five. So I'll get five, and then I'll just stop. Vincent can. Sure. Oh, oh that's fucking. That's worse. That's worse. <laughs> just destroy me, please. Um. Okay. Is that enough? Give me a way to <laughs> permanently kill a vampire. Bing. Sure. Fuck, no, um, sunlight, when they're in mist form. Correct. Fuck, I wouldn't have guessed that at all. I had no- I was gonna say steak, and then I was like, wait, no, because- That just paralyzes him. Yeah. Correct. Uh, the other correct answer is running water. As we've seen on Dungeon Select last campaign. We have. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right, that's 4-0. To Ethan, <laughs> but we've made it to the creature type quick fire round. Oh god, it's um, gonna be even worse. Five creatures. I need a creature type. Such a nerd. The first creature is an Aboleth. Boom. Yeah. Monstrosity. Wrong. Fuck. Aberration. Correct. It's five points for Ethan. Hey, I got zero. you the record, dude. You got it, dude. You're welcome. Uh. <laughs> the Demogorgon. Mm. 
Are you not going to buzz for this one? I have no idea. You might as well take a guess. It's, it's, it's... You take a guess first. Do you know? No. Then it's you take a guess first. I want to give you a chance to... I have more chances if you guess one wrong, so I don't guess that one. Uh, Demi go again. He's going to get it right, though. Watch. <laughs> uh... Fuck it, monstrosity. Wrong. Oh, God. Hmm. <laughs> Is a, um, is a, uh, would it be in a, oh, fuck. What's is that? a, is a demon a monster type? It's not, is it? It falls De under Demon, fiend. no, they fall under fiends, whereas uh, okay. I think devils are their own thing. No, I think they fall under fiend as well. They're all fiends? Okay, yeah, would it no, be a fiend? devils are all fiends, yeah. Would it be a yeah. fiend? Fiend is correct. Demogorgon is a fiend. Hey. I did it! I did it, guys! He has a point. Yay! 5-1. Next up, a wyvern. Ding. Mm-hmm. I, I remember this because it's controversial. Like, it's considered a dragon in 5e. Correct. They're also, you know, they're, they're typically called the cousin of dragons because they're, you know, they're dragon-like, but they're not quite. Six points for Ethan. Two creatures left. Vincent, you need yes. one point to up your score. <laughs> Fuck. One point. Go on, I believe. What creature type is a siren? Uh, Bing? Hmm? Let's go for humanoid. Wrong. Damn. Siren isn't computer humanoid? Oh, um, Siren is in like the fucking like the lure sailor to their death thing. Correct. Uh, um, do you like the music for when you wait to start waiting too long? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, 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 celestial, fuck it. Wrong. Fey. Fey. Uh, oh, yeah. No, that yeah. makes so much that, sense. That kind of makes stupid. sense, yeah. Last up, a Rakshasa. Come on. Come on. I mean, may as well. I don't know it, though. I don't know it. <laughs> Back, Do you know what a Rakshasa backwards is? Backwards hand tiger man. Yeah, I, I would. I was gonna say fiend at like the because it's kind of like it's. I know it's in the hells and shit. So fiend. Correct. Hey. Two points. You've got your score, Vincent. Uh, <laughs> but six points for Ethan, which makes Ethan the uh, the winner of this nerd. little series. <laughs> so the leaderboard, first place you have Ethan with six points. A shared second place of Soko and Bell with four points each. A shared third place of Koi Duke with three points each. Uh, and a shared fourth place with Laura and Vincent. With how many points? Two. Oh, didn't I have three? No. No. I got you... two this time. No, you got yeah, no, one no, last no, time. That, that one doesn't count. This is just. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't get to add it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Just add it together. It's okay, dude. It's no, no, one, no, no, no one will no, notice. No, no. no one will notice. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could have been in sixth, sixth, seventh place, but you're in th yeah, fourth. True, right? true, true. So, like, I'll be honest. At least for me, as someone that's read more of the DM's book than the, like, all the player books, I feel like the monsters thing was much easier for me than the races. Yeah, like, like the only races, the races left, was really the hard. The only races that I had left were super obvious, so I was like, ah. Eh. But hey. With that, uh, we've gotten to the end of today's discourse, but we always end off with a little, uh, a little, a little sneak peek about uh, what's to come. He said, "Come, guys. Next session, you're going to um, continue, you know, exploring this this underground lair. Um, and what I'll say is that if you play your cards right." The uh, talking chest can either... Okay, well, I'll, I'll rephrase it. The talking chest can either give you some very valuable um, tools and knowledge to continue on your investigation, but could also very easily doom you all. Oh, fuck. 
happy about him. Am I going to have to seduce the chest? You can certainly try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that, we'll see you guys on Sunday for uh, Dungeon Selects episode 16. 16. Damn. Doing it. Doing it. Hell yeah. Four months. Of yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. It feels uh, like we're and, so and, like, early. Fun, funnily enough, because Sunday will be the 5th of December, it's looking like this story arc will end like right before our, our Christmas break, which, which would be perfect. Because after the session, we have two sessions left, and then it's Christmas. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the 19th will be the last time we play this year. Um, right? Yeah. Uh, so like, it's looking like um, literally the last session before our break will be like the the end of the story arc, which is just perfect, really. We, we time that. We, we time that. Really well, guys. <laughs> Thank God you guys fucking <laughs> took an entire session of preparing instead of going on in. Oh, don't worry. Um, After we've done this dungeon, we're gonna spend the next three sessions in downtime dealing with all the trauma. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably. about right. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate ya. Uh, you guys are awesome. We'll see you guys on Sunday for um, yeah, some more D and D shenanigans. Peace out. Have a good night. Bye. 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 I can't find the ending scene. There it is. <laughs>